What's up guys, welcome back to another video and I've got to apologise first of all for not getting Monday's uh, Ask Elvis video out. I apologise, it was just hectic, life was hectic, I didn't get a chance to fit it in. So I'm sorry to everybody who sent in questions, uh, please don't think I'm ignoring them because I'm trying to answer as many as I can online. Those I don't, I'll try and squeeze into another video. Those videos haven't stopped, I was just having a week off, that's all. Um, right, today we're going to be looking at Abu Dhabi, the final race of the season. I mean, how, how the hell did that happen? It's unbelievable, isn't it? It seems like only yesterday we were talking about the build-up to the Australian Grand Prix, but here we are. Always seems to go that way. Um, I happen to think it's been a brilliant, brilliant season, this one. I'd love to know your thoughts on this, because, of course, we had that point early on at the French Grand Prix where things probably reached a bit of a low, didn't they? And it kicked everybody into talking about how dull the racing was, how we need to do something about it. And then immediately, it, as if in some kind of response, we just had a collection of races that were off the charts, brilliant. And I think this season, particularly the second half of this season, and again, let me know your thoughts, but I think the second half of this season has been perhaps the collection of some of the best races that we've had in one section of a season for a long time. I think it's been absolutely brilliant. And that's despite the championship, both championships, being wrapped up with, with races to spare. So let me know your thoughts. We'll obviously come back and we'll do a season review video at some stage, but... It's just interesting to, to see what your thoughts are as we head into the final weekend. Anyway, it's Abu Dhabi. Now, Abu Dhabi, two, two different ways to look at Abu Dhabi. If you're there, it's actually a really good weekend. It's a great fun weekend. It's a, an amazing place with great atmosphere. Uh, obviously, it's a night race or a dusk evening race, which makes it slightly unique. For the teams, it's got some amazing facilities. The garages are air-conditioned. I mean, that circuit reportedly cost about a billion dollars to create. It was, bespoke, it was made bespoke for Formula One. Um, and so it has some spectacular scenery, some spectacular architecture. Uh, it's an amazing place to go and visit and just be part of that experience. However, what it doesn't necessarily always do is create great racing. Now I'm reluctant to say this is, is you know, heading for a boring race because anyone who says that in this modern, this modern day and age, in this second half of particularly 2019, is setting themselves up for a fall because literally anything can happen but typically this is not a circuit that's lent itself well to great racing and we're going to have a look in a moment at just why that might be. Um, it's a very smooth circuit so there's no or very little tyre abrasion, tyre wear. Um, the softest end of the range Pirelli have brought um, even you know given that they are the, the softest uh, three tyres in their dry range they are still a step harder than last year, as we've been saying in most of these videos now. We should allow the drivers to push, in theory, without having to manage wear, at least, wear and degradation. What they will definitely have to manage, and this is just the nature of this circuit, is thermal degradation and tyres overheating, the rear tyres particularly. This is a circuit that's all about traction and braking. Loads of big braking events, when we talk about events around a racetrack, we're talking in engineering speak, we're talking about things that you see on a data, on the data tray, so an event, braking event, at every point the driver jumps on the brakes, traction events coming out of these many, many slow sort of right angle, right angle corners where it's about getting traction down because it will catapult you onto, on a couple of occasions, a quite long straight. So in engineering terms, it's much less like it was in Brazil about managing high speed change of direction, about managing uh, you know, downforce levels to, to keep the car planted on the racetrack at, at high speed. Here, the focus from an engineering sense has to be on traction and braking. And that might mean that you might look towards favoring a bit more weight transfer between front and rear. So softer springs, for example, which will under braking throw some weight forward onto the front tires to enable you to put more braking loading through them without locking the tyres because they're being pushed into the, the tarmac as well as through aero loading but also through weight transfer. Similarly in traction when you come out of these slow corners if you can throw more weight towards the rear you load up the rear tyres you minimise the effects of wheel spin and losing traction and therefore importantly and this is really important keeping control of your tyre temperatures. If you go too hard too early around this lap by the time you get to the last part of the circuit, which is all about slow, tight and twisty stuff, your, your rear tyres are just giving up. So this is a circuit about balancing how much performance you take out of the tyres early on 
and how much you save up for later on in the lap. So there's lots of nuances around this circuit, but it's really hard to overtake around here. Because of all of that, lots of slow, tight and twisty start-stop stuff, there's one really, really long straight, and that's the overtaking opportunity. DRS zone over a kilometre long, that's the chance to get by. But this is not a circuit that makes overtaking easy. And so we're going to rely on the drivers perhaps making some bold and brave moves if we're going to spice up the action. Right, shall we have a look? Right, here we go then. Out of turn one, get the power down as early as you can, diagonally across the start, finish straight, sound reverberating off those giant buildings, big break into turn one, down a couple of gears, and again it's about traction, getting the power down, because this is the fastest section of corners on this racetrack, turns two and three are flat out in a modern Formula One car, you've got to use the curves, you're relying on the aerodynamics, the limit of those aerodynamics to keep the car stuck to the racetrack floor, if you get just a tiny bit offline through here, it will spit you out wide and you can use these exit curbs but not too much because just look what happens because of the configuration of this track this race track it has some alternate circuit layouts to the left hand side you can see the exit curb is not one continuously smooth curb it's split up into three different sections that means three different bumps so if you get out on them you crash over that one then crash over that one and then crash over that one and the car is so unsettled spits you up into the air so you've got to be careful of those then it's hard on the brakes out of that really high speed section into a really slow speed using these curbs to get maximum speed through here into this amphi amphitheater type section behind that building ahead of us by the way it's one of the most amazing structures i've ever seen ferrari world if you've never seen it in abu dhabi google it it's impressive to say the least the hairpin though You've got to set yourself up on the way into this hairpin, go nice and wide because it's about getting the exit right, getting the traction down, the power down as early as you can. Because here we go, onto this really, really long straight. DRS opens there, and if you didn't get your power down early, you're losing time all the way along here. This is the point where the engineers are having to talk to their drivers. It's the opportunity where they can make switch position changes before leaping onto the brakes, scrubbing all that speed off. That's perhaps the one clear overtaking opportunity in the braking zone into there, but it's still not easy because the exit's so tight. Crashing over these curves and again, set yourself up for the perfect exit because then the power goes down again. Another DRS line underneath the bridge there, and although this is curved, it's a flat out section all the way up to maximum speed. And then again, a big lunge on the brakes. Possible overtaking for those who are really brave but we go through another section of really slow, almost right angle corners. You use a bit of curb, but not too much because they're higher than they look. Out of this one, turn 14, get the power down as early as you can because 15 and 16 lead straight into each other. They're flat through here and then look, on the exit of 16, with the wheel still turned, you're leaping on the brakes to scrub off all that speed and get into the final sector of the circuit now. At this point, the rear tyres are desperately wanting to give up the surface is overheating, screaming for mercy, but you need all the traction you can get out of this twisty section that goes underneath the circuit hotel there. If you've taken too much life out of the tyres early in the lap, you're really going to struggle to get the power down through here. It'd be like skating on ice. The final couple of corners then. Dab on the brakes, use the kerb. At this point, you'll find cars skidding all over the place. In qualifying, you go flat through here because it's a short run to line, but in the race, it's all about the traction again and heading yourself off into another lap. So there you go, it's going to be a race of keeping rear tyres alive, but also this is the last race of a very long campaign. If you have designed and then used your power unit perfectly to maximise its potential over the course of its lifespan, this engine will be blowing up as it crosses the line at the end of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. That's essentially what it will be designed to do. 
In reality, though, people don't get it absolutely perfectly. There's every chance we could see failures before the chequered flag on Sunday. We saw one last time out, even from the mighty Mercedes, didn't we? Bottas engine not making it to the end of the Grand Prix. So expect more of that. Expect people having to manage things on the car. Expect people trying new things as well. Testing different things. Perhaps experimenting in terms of setup and strategy and those kind of things, given that this is the last real opportunity uh, to put your cars on the circuit before we have the long winter break. Uh, There's a test, of course, coming up immediately after the race. We'll see some drivers moving teams already. Already we know that Esteban Ocon has had an early agreement to move across to Renault, so we'll see him in the yellow colours uh, for the first time. So there's still lots to look forward to, I think, for this weekend and the week that follows. Um, new tyres for 2020 will be tested. It's going to be really interesting to see what the drivers' opinions and the team's opinions of those are, because there's still a chance we may ditch the whole idea of this new 2020 tyre and stick with what we've got. So that's going to be interesting to get feedback in much better conditions than we saw last time out in Austin when they were last run. Uh, anyway, loads, I think, to keep an eye across, loads to look forward to. But as ever, and for one final time this year, I have a very special prize uh, from the gpbox.com. And this time around, it comes from one of their sellers, uh, JYT Bespoke Art. Uh, he's got some amazing stuff on the site. I'll link his page on the GP Box in the description. So go check it out, particularly if you're a Porsche fan. Loads of really cool stuff. But you cannot, I mean, you just cannot fail to like this particular piece. Come and have a look at this. Look at that. It is stunning. That is a stunning piece of artwork. And he's told me that this was a, a commission that he had uh, commissioned as a present for Clive Chapman. He was free to choose uh, the driver and the car. He's quite rightly gone with Jim Clark in his Lotus 49. I just think the colours absolutely pop out. It's a really, really stunning piece and would look great in a frame on your wall. All you have to do to win it, we're going to go with the same way we did it last time out because it works really well. I'm going to put a picture of that painting uh, onto my Instagram and onto my Twitter. There'll be a post on each. All you need to go uh, and do on whichever platform you prefer, and you can do both if you want, give yourself double the chance, is on Twitter. I just need you to retweet it. And if you're on Instagram, I want you to tag in the comments of the picture, in the comments of my post, tag another Formula One fan. That's it, as simple as that. So put a, a comment under my picture on Instagram, tagging a friend of mine, a friend of yours that you know is a Formula One fan. On Twitter, simply retweet my post, that's it. On Monday, I'll be picking a winner at random from everybody who's done that, and it could be coming your way. Thank you very much to JYT Bespoke Art, and of course to the GP Box, not just for this week, but for all the prizes over the course of this year, which I hope you'll join me in agreeing and saying they've just been brilliant. It's been a really lovely addition to the channel this year. It's, it's generated loads of interest. We've had some brilliant, brilliant prizes. If you haven't yet checked out uh, the gpbox.com, just do it. You've heard me talking about it all year. It's just well worth checking out. I'm not saying that because they're paying me or any other reason other than the fact it's got some brilliant stuff on it. It's coming up to Christmas. You might find yourself or someone else are just a brilliant motorsport related uh, present Christmas gift on there. So go check it out. What have you got to lose? Anyway, thank you so much guys for listening and for watching. Good luck if you're entering the prize competition. Enjoy the Grand Prix. Let's hope that we continue in the vein of great races and we have a good one and I'll see you afterwards on Monday. Ta-da. <laughs>